All right, guys, here's a quick overview of the Virginia plan, the New Jersey plan, and the one that brought them together, the Connecticut Compromise, also known as the Great Compromise. Uh, and we're also going to touch on the three-fifths clause uh, as all part of the Constitution. So pay close attention. Um, so Virginia plan, uh, key facts that we need to know. Um, James Madison is the author here. James Madison, who prepared uh, very seriously for the Constitutional Convention. He read a couple hundred books on history and government. Um, he had a famous paper uh, called The Vices of the Political System of the United States, where he summed up all these findings from these different papers. Um, and he really came up with the, the checks and balances idea that's a really important principle of our government, uh, that's a principle of the Constitution. Um, so Virginia plan is James Madison's idea of a national government. So he wants to give Congress a lot of, and the, the national government, a lot of power. Um, so you can think he uh, is more of a federalist than an anti-federalist because he was a supportive of having a strong national government. Um, so for example, uh, he believed that the Tenth Amendment was the wrong way to do things. The Tenth Amendment, we remember, was giving states all the powers that were not given to them by the Constitution. Um, he felt that the federal government should have all those powers that are not granted to it by the Constitution. Um, he was the, believed in the opposite of that. So um, the Virginia plan basically said it was going to have a bicameral legislation. So remember, bi meaning two, cameral meaning chamber, so two bodies, two chambers um, of Congress. Um, however, for both chambers, he wanted to have the representatives of each be based purely on population. Um, so we can think of what kind of states this would favor. This would have favored states with large populations. So uh, the bigger your state was, the more likely it is that you'd be happy with the Virginia plan. Um, if we look at Virginia, the state itself, Virginia had a population that was three times that of New Jersey's, um, which is why you can see why the New Jersey plan, which would be the flip side of it, would be um, against this. Um, so this would be great, as we said, for huge states, states with big populations, because they would have a lot of power in the national government because they would have a lot of representatives. Representatives is power. Population, let's think of it this way. Population leads to representation, which leads to power. Okay, that's the way we want to think of it. Uh, so that was the way that uh, for James Madison's Virginia plan that he believed that our uh, Constitution should be created. So the Virginia plan comes out in the, early on in the Constitutional Convention. Remember, we're 1787. We're uh, in Philadelphia. Um, and then uh, many states that were smaller states would obviously, in this case, would have pretty poor po uh, representation in Congress because they wouldn't have high populations. Remember, population, representation, power. Um, so another plan that came to mind was the... So this was proposed um, by William Patterson. Um, New Jersey was a smaller state, as we said. It was about a third the size um, of Virginia. Um, and this plan was to counter uh, the Virginia plan uh, because small states were in fear of not being represented, represented equally or fairly under the Virginia plan. Um, so what the New Jersey plan said was let's have a unicameral body, uni meaning one, cameral meaning chamber, so one chamber, not two, and that the number of representatives would be equal. So no matter your population, you would have the same number of representatives as a state as any other state in the Union. Um, so that was very similar to the Articles of Confederation, worked the same exact way. Um, and uh, Patterson's plan also uh, wanted to have the power to tax citizens in all states, which was a little bit different, so they wanted to be able to um, spread the wealth in that way. Um, it was a little bit different than the Virginia plan in the taxation as well. Um, so again, what states would this favor? We're thinking small states, okay? Um, if every state has the same representation, no matter what their population, small states like New Jersey would have the same representation as big states like Virginia, and therefore it favored small states. So that's the New Jersey plan. So then after all this debate, they debated for like a month, and they can't decide what they're going to do. Um, finally, Roger Sherman of Connecticut comes out with the Great Compromise, 
also known as the Connecticut Compromise. And it's known as the Great Compromise because this is the compromise that created what we have now in our Constitution. Um, so this looked for a bicameral legislation, two houses, um, and the first would be an upper house, uh, or, or the uh, House of Representatives would be um, made up of, uh, ba of representatives based on the population. So this House of Reps, if it's based on population, would obviously be pleasing the larger states because they would have more representatives. So this is making all the big states happy. The lower house, the Senate, would have equal representation. So instead of having population, this part, the other half of the, of the legislature would have equal representation, which would please small states like New Jersey, right? So they would have a balance. And the whole point is that the compromise, like any compromise, is where people would have a little bit of give and take. They'd have to give up some of um, their, they'd have to make some concessions in order to find a middle ground. So it didn't please everybody perfectly, but each, uh, each plan sort of had say in it. So we can see that the, uh, the House of Representatives came from, it originated from the Virginia plan, while the lower house, the Senate, came from the New Jersey plan. Those are things I, sh I would ask you that I'd want, expect you to know where they came from, where they originated. Okay, so we've got our um, great compromise. We figured out uh, what we, how we're going to split up um, the government, um, and they did agree to this. And this is what, how we have the legislation that we have now. Um, but one thing that we weren't so agree, uh, able to agree on was who was going to count towards this population. Um, if we're going to be counting for House of Representatives and number of people, well, we have to figure out who we're going to count for that. Our issue with slavery, which is the big difficult uh, issue of our, in our country's history that we have uh, debated over and fought over for, for years. So um, this became an issue that instead of thinking of it as large states versus small states, we think of it as a regional issue. So not about the size, but more about the regional location. Um, South wanted slaves to be counted as part of the population. So the South had lots of slaves. So they had a high population of slaves. So they said, yes, count them as part of the population. Why is that? Well, if their population was higher because of the slaves, that would mean that population would lead to more representatives, which would lead to more power. This, of course, being in the House of Representatives. So they really wanted their slaves to be counted as part of the population. North said, no, they should not be. Um, but they, what the North did say was, well, if you're going to count them, you should count them as part of uh, the tax base. So they were thinking, well, if you're going to be counting slaves, well, yeah, sure, you can count them for the purposes of needing to tax them, which, of course, the South said, no, we don't want it. They, they're our property, so they don't need to be counted as that for the tax purposes, but they should be counted as part of the population, um, which is obviously a difficult, uh, it's difficult to find a middle ground for this. ...and come up with the three-fifths clause. So this is the, the way that they would compromise for this. Um, and this part of the Constitution basically said that for every three, sorry, for, for every five slaves, oops, they would count three towards the census. Now, the census, so we understand, census is taken every 10 years. That's what determines the number of people that we have in the country. So every 10 years, they still do this now. They did it in 2000. And 10, they'll do it again in 2020. They count to see how many people are, there are in the United States to, to decide where representation should come from. So the census is deciding population for the purposes of representation. So for the purposes of the census, they would count three-fifths of the slaves in each state as part of that state's population in order to determine how many uh, representatives a state would have. 
so again, this is not, they're not counting them, each individual slaves, slave as three-fifths of a person. They're just saying for every five, every five slaves, you're going to instead have three uh, people for the purposes of representation in the House of Representatives. That also meant the same for taxation. So they were able to please the North, I mean the South with the representation and the North with taxation in this way. So again, we're thinking of which, who was benefiting from what. States with heavy populations of slaves wanted to use the slaves to gain greater power in the house. States with fewer slaves did not want the slaves to be able to be used for other states to gain more power in the house. Um, they didn't, it wasn't that they saw slaves as three-fifths human and two-fifths property or anything like that, um, but more so for the purposes of representation and taxation. With that, they all, the Constitution also outlawed, uh, sorry, prohibited outlawing the slave trade for 20 years. So they said in 1807, we will revisit the slave trade uh, to be able to make decisions about that. Why did they decide to do this? Uh, the purpose being that they knew that slavery was a very contentious issue. So it was a really difficult issue that people did not agree on. And they wanted to form, as a new country, they wanted to make sure they formed a strong, um, unified country that would stay together and be able to uh, build and grow stronger over its uh, first few years as a real country. In order to do that, they felt that they needed to put off the issue of slavery because it was too big of an issue for them to actually deal with. Um, so instead of uh, deciding whether or not they would outlaw the slave trade, they said in 1807, that is when we'll be able to decide about outlawing uh, the slave trade. Um, they also did not even use the term slavery in uh, the Constitution itself. They only used free um, versus uh, all those who are um, free or not, basically. Um, so they kept it vague in that way. Um, so slavery is something that obviously we're going to revisit again uh, later on in our, in our country's uh, formation. But to begin with, um, they didn't want to continue arguing about that issue, so they decided to put it off. Um, and instead of arguing, they wanted to come together as a country and be unified. So that's where we're at with the slave trade. Uh, compromise as well as the three-fifths clause. Um, hope you learned lots. Bring your questions to class. All right. <laughs>